Praise God, fellow Christians. It is yet another uh, Wednesday. We want to bring to you the midweek service. The uh, evangelist is going to give us the word of the day, uh, which we are going to get it from the book of uh, Genesis, <coughs> chapter number twenty-seven. Uh, chapter number one, sorry, Genesis chapter number one, from verse twenty-seven to twenty-eight. I am Christopher Mwangi. And I want to welcome all of us that we may share together this word, knowing that it is going to take us to the next level of our faith. Let us read together Genesis chapter number 1, verses 27 and 28. The Bible says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and, and female, he created them. So God, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Evangelist Karibu. Thank you very, very much. Uh, <clears throat> I want to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. And I want to welcome you once again to today's uh, sermon. That we are going to derive from what we have read from the book of Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 27 and verse number 28. But before you can hear the word, let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, we celebrate you this morning for your goodness, your love, your care, your compassion, and everything good that you've done for us. We thank you because we know that it is you who is in our lives, and uh, besides you there is none. This morning, O oh God, we pray that you may speak to us through your word. As I'm going to share your word, O oh God, bless me and use me as your noble vessel, vessel so that, Lord, things going to go well according to your will. We surrender to you. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, today, we are going to share a theme on bearing fruits. Bearing fruits. From what we have read, we realize that God created us in his own image. After creating human beings, he blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and everything that moves around the ground. Now, it is important for every one of us to know that God created us with a reason and a purpose. Because he did not just do things. He did everything with a reason and a purpose. And for human beings, he created us for several reasons, among them being, one, to worship him. Our main agenda, why we are existing, is to worship God. To make him happy. And this you can get from the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter number 12 and verse number 13. Worshipping God. Making him happy. And fulfilling every obligation that he has set before us. Meaning therefore. That the reason and the purpose. Well, first of all being worship. We should ensure that our worship to God. Continues as long as we live. And worship is a. Uh, uh, we can unpackage it differently so for proper understanding. It's only that we may not have enough time for that, but that can be a topic for another day. Unpackaging worship so that we can know how God wants us to worship Him. The second reason why He, he created us is so that we can be able to bear fruits. Bearing fruits for uh, the creation, for human beings, for the kingdom and everything else. This one we can get it very well from what we have read from the book of Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 28. Which I will say God blessed them and said, I repeat once again, be fruitful and increase in number. That is bearing fruits. The other one is continuing with the work of creation. Because God created us being co-creators with him, being co-workers with him. So continuing with the work of creation. Again in the same, same verse, verse number 28. Fill the earth 
and subdue it. Then, the other one is we are given dominion and authority over everything that God had created. Therefore, it is also very, very important to know that we have the work to dominate God's creation. That's one of the purpose. And also to have authority over everything that God had created. So with this, we realize that God created us and when he was creating us, he had what he had in mind about us. Remember, we did not choose to be created. But God chose to create us. That means that you being alive today, you are God's choice. You are God's design. You are God's um, God's work. And therefore, as we continue living, we should ensure that we do not disappoint God. By disappointing God, I mean we fail to fulfill the purpose why we were created, failing to fulfill the reason why God chose to create, us, to create us, why God appointed us as individuals. Very, very important. Remember that God could have created a different person from you and me and all of us and bring a, 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 forth a completely different people from who are those who are living today. He had that uh, 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 ability. But because he chose, he designed us for being alive today, working in his creation today, and for his creation, and being co-workers with him, we should ensure that we do not disappoint us. Uh, we, don't, we don't disappoint him. Rest, he would say, I would rather have created other people other than the one that I have created now. So, let's work to ensure that God is happy with what we are doing. God is not disappointed with what we are doing. God achieves the goal and the purpose why he created us. This shows that if we were created uh, uh, in his own design, in his own artwork, in his own mind for a reason and a, and, and a purpose. Therefore, we should ensure that we fulfill this purpose. And uh, this particular purpose is uh, in his blueprint. Now remember, if we look at the word appointment, we realize that somebody who has been appointed he has been, or he, she has been appointed by a particular authority. And this authority has a particular assignment that is given to the appointee. And this appointee has to deliver. Therefore, from that we realize that we have been appointed by God. So God is the appointing authority. Secondly, we are the appointees and then our obligation is to deliver on why the reason and the purpose why we were created, of which we have uh, tried to categorize there above. When we talk about worship, when we talk about bearing fruit, when we talk about continuing with the work of creation and uh, when we talked about uh, um, having dominion, and authority over what God had created. Therefore, we must ensure that we don't disappoint God. We should ensure that we fulfill our obligation. We should ensure that our appointing authority is happy with us. We must therefore fulfill his purpose. One, in the family. Because we know that in the family we have an obligation. You may be a... a, 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 a a, a, a family member in terms of uh, children, part of the children, sibling, or the pa parents for that matter, the father or the mother, but you are 
a part and parcel of the family and therefore you should ensure that you fulfill his purpose in the category you are in in the family you should also ensure that you fulfill the, uh, the purpose that you are created for in the marriage in the marriage institution so that god will be happy with you you fulfill your obligation in the in the marriage you should ensure that you fulfill your purpose in the ministry because every person that god created he gave him work in the ministry remember we are working in the kingdom of our father and in this kingdom there are rules and regulations of the kingdom and we should ensure that we abide with them so that we 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 we, we, we fulfill the mandate so the work of the ministry the work of service and the work of service is very very broad because it may be where you work it may be in the church it may be in the uh, in the family as I, I i started by saying it may be anywhere but then we should ensure that the work of service is done well to the, the, the to god's fulfillment so that god can feel that why, why i created this person has fulfilled the desires of my heart and in all other areas of life we should ensure that we fulfill his purpose. As we continue doing this, it is also very, very important to know, to know that we can do whatever we are doing in a much more better way. We can better the way we do our things so that we can bear much fruits. Like for example, Whatever output you give in the ministry, you work much more better than the way you are working today for much fruits in the kingdom. In your marriage, you can become a much more better person so that the life of the family can be more fulfilling. In wherever you work, because Service to God is service to humanity. I mean, service to humanity is service to God. So whatever you are working, because you are also serving humanity, you are serving God. Whatever you are doing, you do it much more better. You give much more production. You, 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 you bear more fruits than you are bearing right now. So that God, we will be happy with you. Remember, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 20, the Bible calls us, Christ's ambassadors as Christians now I'm talking to you as Christians we are therefore Christ's ambassadors sent out to bear much fruits and if we remember this in everything that we do that we are representatives of God here on earth the work of ministry will continue very very well the work of evangelism will work very very well and it is going to thrive so the kingdom of god is going to thrive here on earth and as we pray and say that may your will be done on earth as it is being done in heaven it shall be because we are working towards its growth we are working towards its expansion and therefore we should ensure that as we continue working here on earth, we are bearing more fruits by bringing many into the kingdom. And those who are in the kingdom, they continue to mature in Christ Jesus. We should serve the people wherever we go and we serve them well to, to, so that they can feel that uh, surely God is working in us through the people that he has appointed. And they change their way of life to ensure that God is happy with them every other time. Praise be the name of the Lord. Therefore, remembering that you are Christ's ambassador wherever you go, you will also reflect the image of God, the image of the Creator, wherever you are and in whatever you do. This means that we should be very careful as we continue working, as we continue living, we mind about what we are saying. We mind about what we are thinking. We mind about what we are saying so that the image of God can be reflected in us. Remember what God said. Uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, the same, same scripture that we have read in, in, in verse number 27. So God created man in his own image. 
And that is why I'm saying we should reflect the image of God that is in us wherever we go and in whatever we do so that God can be seen. His power, his authority, his well-being, his righteousness, his holiness can be seen wherever we go. And uh, by that, we will be ministering. By that, we'll be evangelizing. By that, we'll be making God more popular than uh, probably he is right now in uh, to the humanity now as we think about all this it's good to know that there are a few things that are required to be seen in us so that we can be able to make to bear much fruits number one as i have said god created man in his own image we should ensure that we maintain the image of god Remember, when God said, let us make man in our own image, he was talking about him being spiritual. And therefore, he created a human being who is spiritual. And the spirit that he put in man is holy. But it is for man to make a decision of whether to remain holy or unholy. It is uh, the duty of man to ensure that he up upholds righteousness or not. This is choice. So your choice determines what kind of a person you are, whether you maintain the originality of God or, or otherwise. And therefore, we are encouraged to maintain this image so we remain holy throughout and also connect with him every other time and how do we connect with god in the righteous way of life that we live we continue prayerfully talking to him so that we, we can commune with him so we maintain the image of god that is holiness and we continue maintain uh, connecting with him through prayer every other time because this is the way that god has chosen or has decided that we should use so that we can continue communicating with him that is point number one point number two we need to be to, to continue remaining spiritually inspired we continue to remain spiritually inspired and what do we mean by being inspired uh, being inspired is being mentally stimulated to do or to feel something creative at this time concerning our spirituality and our relationship with our maker praise be the name of the lord that is what we mean by inspiration so our spirits should be stimulated by the power of god and it's upon us to ensure that this is done because god gave us a free choice to choose on how we will be how we are going to live the choices that we make for ourselves so this one for us to bear much fruits we need to be stimulated by the power of god so that we can be spiritually inspired and when we are spiritually inspired god will continue revealing unto us the secrets of his kingdom god will continue speaking to us through different ways and by that we'll be productive in the ministry we'll be productive in the kingdom we sh we, 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 we will help many to, to come closer and closer to god to continue to know more and more about our god then number three we should ensure that our old life our old life dies again this is is uh, uh, explained very well in the book of second corinthians chapter number 17 chapter number 5 verse number 17 18 there and it says that those who are in christ jesus they are a new creation their old is gone and the new has come and when the new comes it shows that one has become a new being because everyone who lives in the world lives in a sinful world but when we surrender to christ jesus we become new creations in christ jesus and even though we are living in a sinful world god makes us holy by again setting us apart because we have made a choice to live for god therefore 
we should ensure that our old sinful nature dies and dies a natural death. And then we live as new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. We in, with this, we will be able to bear fruit and much fruits. And not only bearing fruits, but also bearing fruits that are going to last. Because that is what God wants us to do. Remember, I, I recapitulate the verse uh, uh, in Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 28, which says, God blessed them and then said, be fruitful and increase in number. So, bearing fruit, increasing in number. Therefore, let our old nature die completely so that we can continue bearing much fruits by being guided by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is God, God himself. And number four, we need to prune our ways, pruning. Now, pruning is removal of every unwanted branch which is done by the farmers so that the farmer can have uh, uh, much fruit. Now, as Christians, we also require to prune our ways. Because you realize that as we continue living every other day, there are so many things that crops up. There are so many things that we learn. Some of them are good, others are bad. Now, by pruning, you realize that those bad things that we learn or good things that we learn, they influence our behavior, they influence our way of thinking, they, they influence our way of doing things. So the bad ones, we should prune off so that they don't influence us negatively. So that in the kingdom, we don't bear fruits. Because we cannot bear fruits when we are disconnected to, to God, from God. And we can only be disconnected from God if we live unholy lives. Therefore, let us prune every way of life in us that does not prune, uh, that does not please God. And finally, let us abide in Christ. By abiding in Christ, I mean we abide in His Word because what the Bible says in the book of uh, John, chapter number one and verse number one, is that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was. God himself. Meaning therefore that abiding in uh, the word, it means that abide, it means abiding in Christ Jesus our Lord because he is the word. Without God, we cannot do anything. Without Christ in our lives, we cannot do anything because we don't have uh, uh, power of our own. We don't have our own wisdom. And remember what the Bible tells us that if we lean on our own understanding, we are going to fail. But if we lean on God's understanding, we shall surely succeed. So today, purpose to live for God, purpose to bear fruits for God, purpose to abide in Him. And by abiding in Him is obeying Him, obeying His commands, reasoning to His word so that it can continue to edify us every moment of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Almighty, in Jesus' name, we celebrate you this morning. Thank you for speaking to us and reminding us the purpose why you created us and why we are alive at a time like now. Our prayer is that, Lord, you may help us to continue bearing fruits, and not only bearing fruits, but fruits that are going to last. So that in the future, generations and generations to come, they are going to build on the foundation that has been laid by us by you through us, O oh God, by our accepting to surrender ourselves to you. Our prayer is that you continue using us in this generation so that in the, in the future can be much more brighter, even as the kingdom of God grows here on earth. We thank you, we worship you, and honor you. Our sincere prayer of faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you, may he keep you, may he help you to live for him and even to bear much fruits. Amen and amen.